Hi everyone, I uh, wanted to make this uh, video on the dollar Swiss and it was a trade setup. Um, I didn't take this trade, but I know it was, um, I did some analysis and I think it was for uh, for Spencer who um, at the time was looking to go long on the um, uh, dollar Swiss, right? And uh, just a little tip, if you type in a uh, trading view in the search bar, you'll get um, pretty much all of the, um, charts that I pretty much you know post um, and obviously you can you know, if, you, if you click on them you can you know check what was what the context of it in terms of you know why you would want to you know what was happening at the time and the conversation probably surrounding that if there was one but um, yeah so the 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 actual chart I wanted to have a look at was was this one and again I think it was uh, it was a uh, Spencer uh, that um, basically wanted to go long on this on this uh, currency pair and I was about to delete the analysis because I hadn't looked at this for a, for a little bit and then I realized I thought oh yeah this would be actually um, you know a, a really good example of um, you know just some fundamental analysis first of all as well as you know some technicals now um, just to guess you know put this into again some some more context is was that um, there was obviously some um, British price action, something fundamentally. I think it might have been, I think it might have been the jobs numbers on the third of February. I can't remember exactly what it was. It was either that or some sort of CPI number. But the point is, is that you know the dollar was now looking like a uh, was then looking like a buy, right? And I did some analysis as far as you know pull back into the zone before you know potentially going long. Now I didn't know how long that was going to take. You know, again, this was the original you know analysis um, right here, so you can have a look. But what ended up happening was was prices came down. Now, why this zone? This is the this is the question, right? So why this zone in particular? Well, there's there's a number of reasons. Um, first thing is that it was um, not just a level of you know support and resistance that had been traded, um, you know, obviously traded, but there was as I put here, there was traders uh, who were caught going short, right? So a lot of uh, traders who go um, who went short in and around this move here or wanted to go short at this move here um, you know uh, and didn't get a chance to would have definitely been looking for a trade here and so um, and me typically would be right in terms of if you're you know fundamentally short on the dollar Swiss then this is pretty much the best area to look for a short trade at the time not knowing what was coming uh, in the future or maybe a couple of hours later and then once um, you know these traders got got kind of caught going short on that level of you know support and resistance, yeah, or resistance there, right? Um, they've been they've committed capital, and then all of a sudden they get caught because prices have gone against them. So that's the the, the capture phase of the. Uh, the trade right because loss aversion bias kicks in they move and remove their stop losses the pain sets in as prices go against them the pain is looking at their um their unrealized uh you know loss and um instead of accepting maybe one or two percent now they're down 10 15 percent on their account right 20 percent depending if they're you know over leveraged and so you know when you're looking at a level of um of um, the uh, of support and resistance or supply and demand, it's really important to understand the motivations of why there is likely to be more demand than supply at a level. It's not just good enough to say, okay, yeah, you know what, that's a level of you know support resistance. That's a level of demand. You have to understand why. First of all, fundamentally, you would want to be a buyer at a dollar over the Swiss franc, and also as well why. Um, there's likely to be more demand orders than supply orders, right? So this area here, trade is going short, pain, and then you've got relief. Now the relief is where traders who went short here would have been uh, to, to exit their trade at maybe a small loss or a break even, which is the next best trade after you know going through um, you know a massive drawdown in their account or unrealized drawdown. When prices start to come back down, they want some pain relief. And then if they went short here, then they have to basically buy to exit, right? They have to buy to exit.
and um, and then there's traders who are trading just support and resistance looking to buy here you know they have no idea they're just pressing buy setting pending orders or um, you know whatever orders they are or looking for entries in and around this area they're looking to buy and anyone who went short anywhere up here is probably looking for to take profit and if you go short here then again to take profit you have to do what buy in and around here you've also got you know the dollar which was a buy at the time against the Swiss franc and so there yeah, there we have <laughs> you know there we have it right and so you know that was the initial you know bounce now we did come back further right and this is again due to uh, liquidity this is due to um, not everybody got a chance to buy and when I say everybody I'm talking about not retail traders but institutional you know banks etc remember they have to accumulate and buy over a certain period of time right and so you know when when it's okay for us to just place a place an order a couple of orders but they need to avoid liquidity um, uh, slippage right and so if there's not enough liquidity uh, to buy enough orders right and, and fill their books as they want to then um, you know they, they you know the, the, the market makers I guess are tasked with um, uh, ensuring that there's enough opportunity for them to buy at some point right and so this is basically what happened again Again, right so when prices started to come down and nothing had changed fundamentally for the dollar they could get even an even better price yeah and you can see that it basically drove prices even higher and so um, and so yeah this area here this demand zone and again nobody knows where nobody knows exactly where the turning point is going to be right but you can you know be uh, I guess fairly confident that when prices start to come down if fundamentally and sentiment wise you still want to be a buyer of the dollar this is going to be a cheap area and you can pretty much see you know where they again ended up um, stop hunting traders right so if I kind of delete a lot of this stuff um, off the chart you can actually see the stop hunt you know below traders would have been going um, traders would have been going probably long at that area of uh, intraday you know support one two it stop hunts all the the, the the traders below yeah so you've got that move to the upside would have drawn in a lot of traders because at the time you know who who's not going to go long at that area right who's not going long at that you know um uh, that level of obvious support and if you even extend that back that's very accurate right a very accurate level of support and resistance you know um not everyone can get involved in this trade right the, the institutions don't want everyone to get involved in this trade and so um you know the average day trader would have looked to get involved in that trade you know just just taking that as a level of uh, support it stop hunts everybody as they you know put their stop losses below that and then, you know, you see actually that the big money ended up, you know, pushing money higher, which is basically what they wanted to do because they wanted to buy dollars um, over the Swiss franc. So, uh, again, going back to, you know, the analysis that was on the uh, the 6th of, um, of February right here, you can pretty much see what happens. Now, this is a CPR that typically, 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 um, is 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 middle of the auction and um as you're learning i would probably caution maybe against taking these types of trades unless you're really confident on the fundamental side of things um typically you want to trade at auction uh lows or an obvious auction lows and obvious auction highs um in the context of looking at you know where we are on the daily time frame chart right so you're trading if you're looking at a daily time frame chart really the obvious auction low would be somewhere down here um, this would be actually considered potentially, you know, I say potentially, but this would be considered more fair value. Um, and obviously this would be considered more expensive if you're looking at, you know, buying the dollar. Now there's nothing wrong with buying at fair value, right? There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but just in the context of um, uh, where the best place is to buy, you're always looking at lows rather than fair value but of course you can start to you know trade at fair value but what i would say is if you are trading around fair value um don't put as much um of of, of, of your your know, max risk on fair value than you would 
for example, at maybe the lows of a, of of a of a, of an auction. So um, if you're not, if you normally trade, I don't know, zero point five percent, right? Then maybe just trade at least maybe half that, right? Zero point two five percent. But you'd put more money on the fact that this is the better place to buy. If it does come down here, of course, you don't necessarily want to miss out on that move if you know you have a strong bias. So you know, just in case you know the market doesn't. Um, agree with you in terms of you know where the, the the immediate bargain is right then and the prices come down here at least you've only lost 0.25 percent but this area here would be the best place to look for buying and then that would be where you'd probably put a bit more on or your normal position size and if that if the market agrees with you that that is a bargain then prices should want to go um, a lot higher so that's really where we are better risk reward down at the lows um, and uh, yeah I thought that was a really interesting um, uh, really interesting uh, chart you know in terms of uh, the actual way that it played out you know you've got for those of you who understand you know uh, market making you've got that unfair auction that needed to be completed and actually it was completed right there right so the unfair auction started right there it was probably mostly completed there partially but then obviously there as well that was obviously the completion of the unfair auction um an institutional flow push prices to the upside so yeah very 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 nice um you know trade setup i'm not too sure if spencer got involved in this i'd have to ask but um yeah the analysis was uh pretty uh spot on in terms of um you know what what we actually said at the time and um and yeah so probably on the sixth and that was where we are and so yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and um, really got uh, some use out of it. And again, it's not just about looking at um, support and resistance or supply and demand because their supply and demand is everywhere. Remember, fundamentals first, right? Why is why are you buying? Why are the banks buying? Why are they likely to buy at certain areas? And then looking at the higher and lower time frames, or the higher time frames first, then going down into the lower time frames. If it's in a good spot on the higher time frame, if it's in the, the setup is in a bargain area on a higher time frame, then brilliant. You know that this is a decent area to look for buying on a, on a lower time frame. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, take care and speak to you soon.